Rav Nosen, he explains this interesting uh, phenomena that when a true tzaddik is alive, he faces tremendous opposition in his lifetime. All types of doubts and questions and there are people and other tzaddikim that have different opinions and different approaches and people began to cast doubts on this true tzaddik. And however, after this tzaddik passes away, it becomes clear to everybody that this tzaddik was a true and righteous individual. And it was a shame that in his lifetime, people shunned from him, turned away from him because of the opposition. Because they see afterwards what would have been gained if they were yes to follow and connect to this tzaddik. A classic example is the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov in his lifetime faced tremendous op opposition. There was major opposition. In fact, there was a story told of a woman, an elder woman, or a woman, doesn't give the age in the story, that saw the Baal Shem Tov passing and she wanted to throw a stone at him. She wanted to pick up a stone to throw at him. Because that, that's what she was taught and understood, that he is a false leader and he must be cast, ca, ca, what's the word in English, ca, to be cast out, right? To be, to be pushed out. So she tried to lift up the stone and she couldn't lift it up. So she said a quick prayer, Hashem, please let it be considered in your eyes as if I threw the stone at this Baal Shem Tov. And the Baal Shem Tov, after hearing what she said, he said that tremendous delight was gained in heaven from her sincere prayer. Even though it was to throw a stone at him, there was delight on her sincerity. So going back to the point though, during the tzaddik's lifetime, there's opposition. And something interesting, like we said, is that after they pass away, people begin to recognize the greatness of that tzaddik. However, it's, a bit, it's too late a bit because what, was, what could have been gained from the tzaddik in his lifetime is no longer the case physically after his passing. You lose out. So this is a phenomena that happens, that when something good comes your way, so the Baldavar, the evil one, sets many obstacles to cast doubts of the significance and the value you can gain from this holy item. This also applies, believe it or not, with a parent-child relationship. That, and unfortunately, very common, that when one's parents are still alive, a person doesn't truly and fully value that parent. Only, unfortunately, after that parent passes away, does the child begin to yearn and feel such a gap lacking due to the lack of that parent being in their life, being existent, being in this world. And this even happens to people who know about this. They know that they're supposed to value the parents, but there's just such a cloud, a blog, a bog, a cloudy bog blurring the person's vision of the true worth and the value of what they have access to, especially their parents, and only afterwards they, they, they regret it. This, it seems to be sent purposely from Hashem. You can have even the best people, they do their best to respect their parents, but they don't value them fully, and only afterwards they regret it. After the passing, they regret it. Even the best of people who know about this. Why this scenario? Why this setup? Because still Hashem is always good and there's an ultimate good in the way things happen in life, even in opposition and even in concealment, like in the case of the parent or in the case of the true tzaddik. What is gained that when this item is no longer here, such as a parent or a tzaddik, a true teacher and guide, is that the yearning infused in the person pushes them to daven about it, to pray about it, to express their yearning to Hashem about it. And for Hashem, this yearning is sometimes even greater than actually having access to the act itself. Sometimes there's this rule in life, in Judaism, that the yearning for the item is even greater than what can be benefited from the item itself. Because the yearning itself brings to a much fuller and deeper and powerful level of appreciating and connecting to that item. This explains this phenomena of the concealment at the lifetime of a tzaddik or the lifetime of one's parents and that afterwards one begins to appreciate them. We should have the merit to have our eyes opened and to truly fully appreciate our parents and the true tzaddikim while alive.